Hello people, Strange Templar here. Welcome to my first tutorial for Feed the Beast. Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite mods in this mod pack called Not Enough Items, or NEI for short. NEI is a mod that is chock full of information that is useful to both advanced users and beginners of Feed the Beast. Now if you're anything like me, the first thing you noticed when you came into this world is that we now have a mini-map in the upper right hand corner, which we'll talk about some other time. The second thing you probably noticed is that after punching your tree to get a crafting table, you opened up your inventory, and holy crap, look at all this stuff. This is very intimidating to a first-time user, and I know it really intimidated me when I first started. But don't worry, because I'm here to show you everything there is to know about NEI. NEI is this information that you see around the inventory and crafting area of the screen. One of the most useful functions that NEI has is the ability to show recipes and usages for all the items in the game. Now not every item is included in NEI, but almost every single item possible is included, with a very few exceptions. NEI has three settings. Cheat mode, which you see here, utility mode, and recipe mode. By default the game starts in cheat mode, but there's just so much information in cheat mode that I'm going to switch over to recipe mode and show you the basics from here. Like I said, one of the primary functions of NEI is to show the recipes and the usages for items in this game. So say for example we wanted to learn how to make an iron ingot, which hopefully all of you guys know how to do if you're watching this. First, uh, NEI has a search box down below, so any item that you want to learn how to make, you can just type in to the box. Now you'll notice that as I'm typing iron ingot, well let's stop right here, this shows every item that has the word iron. It just automatically ups, updates all of this information on the right hand side. So once I type in iron ingot, we're left with iron ingots and dark iron ingots, which obviously include the words iron and ingots. So to, to find the recipe for iron ingots, all you do is hover over and press the R button. Nope. Oh, Hit enter down here to finish typing, and then you hit the R button. This here will show you all the different recipes for iron ingots. You'll see that a block of iron can turn into nine iron ingots, nine iron nuggets can turn into one iron ingot, and you just go through and it'll show all the different ways to craft iron ingots. Now you'll notice all this shows is shaped crafting, so these have to be in exactly the same areas. If you go over here you'll find shapeless crafting, smelting, Alloy furnaces, which we'll deal with much later. Powered furnaces, all these different ways to make iron ingots. Another thing that NEI shows is the usages for items. So say, for example, we have an iron ingot here in our inventory, but we don't know what to do with it. By hovering over either on the side panel here, or even in our inventory, if we press the button U on our keyboard, it'll show us all the different items that we can make with an iron ingot. Now you'll see it doesn't necessarily mean only iron ingots, it just shows us every single recipe that contains an iron ingot in it. So some of these more advanced recipes will show iron ingots, lead ingots, sulfuric acid, all these things will make random items on the right hand side. So if you're ever unsure how to make an item or what an item is used for, just remember, hover over it, press R on the keyboard to find recipes, or U on the keyboard to find the usages. Another thing that NEI does is helps you find items in your inventory. Say for example, you have a ton of different ingots in your inventory and you can't remember which one's an iron or you don't want to go through each one and read. If you double click on the search button down here, you'll notice that it turns yellow along the border and um, iron ingots in our inventory are now highlighted. Now if we wanted find all ingots in our, you know, we could type in ingot and it'll show all the different ingots highlighted in our inventory. If we wanted to find all the different woods, which we only have one of, we type in wood and it'll highlight that. Now that's cool, but we also have inventory searching in our chests. So say we wanted to find iron in our chest, we type in iron and you'll notice iron ingot is highlighted both in our inventory and we have iron wood ingots, iron ingots, and dark iron ingots highlighted in our chest. 
So NEI makes everything really easy to find in case you get lost or lose an item in, somewhere in, in your inventory or your chests. Another helpful feature of NEI is the ability to select which sets of items you want to search through. Now say for example you knew you wanted an iron item but you didn't remember exactly what it was called. You knew it contained iron and you didn't want to search through all of these different items to figure out which one it was. You couldn't remember what the icon was. What you can do, say you remember it's from Buildcraft, but you can't remember anything else except that it's iron. What you can do is click this Item Subsets button up top, and it'll select, have you select all the different types of items. You can go through mo all the different mods, and you can use your middle mouse button to scroll through all the different items. Uh, but say we wanted to have just build craft items. We can either click or right click on each item to deselect it and start with absolutely nothing on the right hand side and then hit build craft and you'll see that all these items are use the word iron and are from the build craft mod. The other option, let's go ahead and turn these back on real quick. If you double click on build craft, it will immediately cancel out everything else except for what falls under build craft and you can see we have the exact same items over here. Another thing that you can do in NEI is say you don't know a mod very well and you want to learn all the different items that are used in that mod. Say for example when I was learning how to use applied energistics when I was first starting off what I did was I clicked off all of these different items just like that. I went to creative tabs and clicked on applied energistics and now everything that you see on the right hand side falls under the Applied Energistics tab. Most of what you see on the right hand side applies under Applied Energistics. Now, for some reason some items are not quite categorized correctly, but you'll get a general feel for what is or isn't in the mod pack. For example, all these items that start with ME are found in the Applied Energistics mod. Another feature with all these subsets is uh, the ability to save your subsets for later search. Say for example, we keep this Applied Energistics tab and we want to save it for future use. We can right click on Item Subsets and we have a couple different settings to save the subsets. For now, let's go ahead and save and save number two right there. Now let's go ahead, we can go ahead and turn all these back on and say we wanted to go through the Applied Energistics on the right hand side, we just right click, hit load two, and we go immediately back to the same setup that we had before. Uh, load one was another one that I had to immediately turn on all, all available mods and items, but for some reason it doesn't seem to be working quite properly. Anyways, let's go ahead and turn those back on. Now that we have a feel for how the recipes and the usages of items work, let's go ahead and switch back over to cheat mode, which adds even more functionality to NEI. One of the primary ways cheat mode works is to create the ability to add or remove items from the world. We also have the ability to manipulate the world itself by setting time, weather, um, our inventory, a whole bunch of different abilities that aren't available in just plain old recipe mode. Now you'll see, even though we are in cheat mode, pressing R on an item will still show you the recipes for the items, and pressing U on an item will still show you all the uses for that item. One more thing I forgot to show you earlier is that even in this panel, which shows the recipes, hitting R here will show you the recipes for all the different items. So say we come here and we see that two sandstones will make two chiseled sandstone blocks, but we also need this minium stone, but we're not sure how to make a minium stone. Hitting R will show you the recipe for a minium stone, which requires shards of minium and an inert stone. Now we don't know how to make an inert stone, so pressing R will show you all the recipes for how to make an inert stone. So it makes it easy to quickly go through all the different things without having to search and show, you know, search for each item individually. And same with an inert stone, we can press U to find the use for the inert stone. We'll see that it creates a minium stone. We hit U to show all the things that a minium stone can do. Cheat mode enables a player to be able to directly manipulate the world and also work with inventory stuff. 
So say, for example, it's almost dawn right now, but we wanted it to be midnight for whatever reason. We could go in here, and you'll see we have the option to set time to dawn, set time to noon, set time to dusk, or set time to midnight. So even though the sun is rising, we could just hit set time to midnight, and all of a sudden, the moon is right in the middle of the sky. Now say we want it to be noon again, you'll see that now the sun's in the middle of the sky and everything's bright again. You might notice that uh, you'll see day 5, day 4, day 3 as you see the time manipulations always force the day forward. So even though we just hit noon, by hitting noon again, it will set it to day 6. So in case you have anything that's dependent on days or whatever, know that any time of any time manipulation, even if you wanted to go back six hours, will actually move it forward to day seven. You can only move time forward, never backwards. Another feature in cheat mode is the ability to turn rain on or off. So in case it's raining, you can always just turn the rain on, or if you don't want the rain, you can always click the button again to turn the rain off. Just that easy. And it takes a couple seconds for the rain to stop, but you'll see in just a second, there it is. The sky is now clear. Another option in cheat mode is to turn creative mode on or off. By hitting the C right here, you'll be able to turn it to creative mode, which will give you access to all the different items. You'll be able to just place them just like you would in creative mode and break them just like you would in creative mode. When you're done with creative mode, just hit the C again and you'll go back to survival. You'll have all the items. Well, that. Oh, creative plus inventory. We don't want to. And go through here. And we have back to survival mode. Our original inventory. And we still have an APRS data bank. Which we don't really want. The next item over here is turn magnet mode on or off. Magnet mode basically makes it so that uh, you can grab items from a much further distance. You'll see that. Uh, usually it's about a chunk distance, but items that are down there will just automatically get pulled to you. Um, the range can be pretty good, but it's not infinite. Now, I'm currently playing on Peaceful, but say you were playing on a harder difficulty with monsters and you were to somehow take damage or be starving or what else. Uh, healing the player is this option right here. Clicking it will automatically restore you to full health and full hunger. I uh, doesn't restore oxygen levels though, so if you're drowning, you may want to swim up. Uh, it will heal you from the drowning damage though. So, you know, there is that option. Also, cheat mode gives you the ability to add items directly to your inventory. Say for example we needed a bunch of dirt. Clicking on the dirt icon over here will give me a full stack of dirt in my inventory. Right clicking will give me one of whatever item that we're we want. Say for example we needed a couple ferns, just right clicking on it will add one of those ferns. Now another option is by shift left clicking we'll give ourselves an infinite number of whatever item it is. So now we have an infinite number of lapis. So as you can see uh, it's more than a full stack but by placing it it'll go down to 110 for a second and it'll immediately fill itself back up and it will continue to forever. We could fill the world with lapis blocks and still have exactly 111 in our inventory. One last thing about cheat mode is that it enables us to delete items directly from our inventory. Like I said, lapis right now is in infinite, meaning that we can't get rid of it even if we wanted to. We can't place enough of it to get, get it out of our inventory. What we can do is pick our, the item up and drag it directly to the trash can up here. Click on the trash can and it's deleted from the world. Um, you can do that multiple times with multiple items. You can also click on the trash can over here to turn delete mode on. Anything you click in your inventory will immediately be deleted. Right clicking the item will cause it to just one of that item to disappear. So if you just wanted to get rid of a few items, right clicking on dirt will cause it to disappear. Now say for example you had a whole bunch in your inventory that you just didn't care about and didn't want anymore. By shift clicking on 
the trash can over here, you'll see that it says delete all items from current inventory screen. And it does just that. So holding down the shift key and then clicking the trash can will delete every item from your inventory. Now, don't forget to turn delete mode off when you're done with it. Otherwise, the next time you click on it, it will be gone. And lastly, you'll notice these save buttons over on the left hand side. Cheat mode enables you to save your inventory for later. So say for example we had a list of all these different wools that we wanted to use for later. What we could do is click save here and it'll save our inventory for later use. Now we can still use it now but say for example we had a different inventory or we used all of it by clicking load one here it'll automatically fill up our inventory with everything that we had previously and it saves with uh, items in our inventory as well so you can click here it'll have our first inventory click load two it'll have those our second inventory and you can have three of these set at any time uh, clicking the X will delete that save from the inventory save from your files so that you can save it again later or add a different save file later now I told you that NEI has three settings cheat mode recipe mode and utility mode. I've shown you recipe mode and I've shown you cheat mode but I haven't yet shown you utility mode. Going into options and switching over from cheat mode to recipe mode to utility mode you'll see it looks has a little bit of the both. You have the items over here but you can't really cheat them in. Uh, clicking on an item in recipe or utility mode will show you the recipes by default. You can also still press R to show recipes or U to show uses. You'll also notice though that in the upper left hand corner we still have the delete mode option and we still have the magnet mode option. So utility mode gives us the recipe mode but it also gives us the delete mode and the magnet mode from cheat. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You can learn how to do everything but you still have the ability to delete and turn magnet mode on or off without any opportunity to accidentally add items into your inventory. Now one last feature that I wanted to show you about NEI is relatively new but is extremely useful especially when exploring caves or when setting up a home. Uh, what it'll do by pressing F7 you'll notice that now there's all these little laser red X's located on the floor. Each of these X's show the possible spawn locations of monsters. Now we're in a cave so there's a lot of monsters that can spawn but you'll see that around torches because of the light level monsters can't spawn here. By placing a torch here it'll delete all these X's and so it'll show you by light level where monsters can or cannot spawn. So it really helps when clearing out a cave um, so now you can make sure that that annoying creeper that spawns behind you after exploring a cave that you thought was safe and exploded you, now you can make sure without having to manually count out the spaces that no monsters are going to spawn. Now you note even though it's daylight out here the X's are still showing on the ground. This means that when it's nighttime there will not be enough light level for to prevent mobs from spawning. So even though it's light now it's saying that at nighttime monsters could spawn. By placing this torch you'll see these X's disappeared just like it did in the cave. Um, so anything within this radius of the torch nothing will spawn there only outside. So this is great when setting up camp, setting up your home, make sure that it's completely mob proof, completely impervious to mob spawns, all of that good stuff. It's a great feature that NEI has and it has saved me multiple times. I no longer have those random zombies waiting in my house when I get home to give me a hug. As much as I love to get hugs, it's just not nice to get a hug from a zombie. Alright guys, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if it was helpful. Um, I plan to be making more tutorial videos soon. Let me know what you guys want to see, what you guys want to learn about. Uh, let me know and I will get on it as soon as possible. Again, thank you all for watching and until next time, don't be a stranger.